Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode in a brand new series, React for Absolute Beginners. In this series, we'll learn how to operate the React JavaScript framework, which is currently the most popular JavaScript framework in the world at the time this video is being made. If you want to make professional grade web apps, this tutorial is for you. By the end of this course, you'll learn a huge array of topics. You'll learn how to build React components, how to use React state, how to conditional render, and so much more. Piece these things together and you'll be well on your way to becoming a React developer. In this first episode, I want to quickly go over what React is and what it's used for, how to set up a project in React, and what the project environment looks like. So without any more waiting, let's get started. If you're only interested in getting the project set up, you can go ahead and skip forward in the video. Otherwise, I want to take one or two quick minutes to give you some background on React. Back whenever web development first popped up a couple of decades ago, HTML was the only language able to be used on a web page. HTML was great as a markup language, but it lacked customization and styling to really make web pages look nice. A few years after HTML was invented, CSS came out, which allowed web developers to actually customize their HTML content to look nicer. With CSS, developers were able to style pages with colors, nice spacing, and all sorts of other formatting tools. Now that pages were customizable, the new problem then became that web pages weren't interactive and couldn't do very much on their own. And that's where JavaScript came in. JavaScript looks like many other mainstream programming languages and allows developers to write code that can interact well with HTML and CSS to create interactive pages that users could potentially do things with. Users can click on buttons, open up images or videos, or route between pages. And this has been standard since. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all combine to make most web pages you see on the internet today. However, in the last couple of years, as the web has become increasingly more complex, developers have found that creating large web apps that need to be super dynamic and flexible is simply very challenging just using JavaScript to interact with HTML and CSS. And this is where React comes in. React is a JavaScript framework created by Facebook in 2013. React is meant to solve the shortcomings of vanilla JavaScript, which is creating apps that can be dynamic and flexible while being easily scalable. React has gained popularity in recent years because of these factors, and many developers find it to be a very well-routed framework, hence why it is currently the most popular JavaScript framework in the world. So what is React not? React is not a programming language like JavaScript or Python. React is not competing with JavaScript because it is built off JavaScript and uses JavaScript to run all of its functionality. Think of it like this. It's possible to build a house using just a hammer and some other basic tools, but it's not ideal. It's easier to build a house if you're using heavy machinery that can get the job done quicker and better. So think of JavaScript like the basic tools and React as the heavy machinery. If you want to build nice, scalable, and flexible web pages and don't want to gouge your eyes out while you're doing so, then React is for you. Now, one final note before we get started with this course. I like to emphasize that this is not a course for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In this course, I'm going to assume you have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as React uses elements that relate to all three of these things. You don't have to be experts in any of them to watch this course, but you should at least know what they look like and what they do. A working knowledge of JavaScript will help out a lot with this course, however. So let's work on getting your React project set up. There's gonna be a couple of things you need to do before we get started. First, you need to install a code editor where you can actually modify and run your React code. I highly recommend Visual Studio Code as it's super easy to use and has tons of customization with external libraries and packages that you can install. You can install it by going to code.visualstudio.com and get started with it right away. The last thing I want to do before we get started is to install Node.js. Node is basically a server environment that allows you to actually run JavaScript code on your computer. Without it, we wouldn't be able to actually run our code and see what it is doing. So go to nodejs.org and install the version that is recommended for most users. When you do this, it should automatically install another package, Node Package Manager or NPM, that we will need as well. Now that you have those two things installed, let's actually create our React app. React comes with a creation tool called Create React App, or CRA, but it's rather slow and manages packages pretty inefficiently. For our sake, we're going to use a tool called V that will create our React app for us and give us lightning fast startup times when we want to launch our code. So to do this, open up your Visual Studio code and go ahead and open up your terminal in the bottom. To do this, if it's not open by default, you can go to View at the top here and then look down here and click Terminal. So once the terminal is open at the bottom here, you have a couple of options like problems, output, debug console, and terminal, but make sure you just have this terminal selected. Next, you're going to want to go into the directory that you want to use. So as you can see, my root directory here as shown by my terminal is users slash Austin, which are both folders on my computer. So most of the code that I have in my PC is stored in a repos folder, which is inside a source folder, which is inside this Austin folder that we have here. So to get to that directory, all I need to do is type CD, which means change directory, and then the name of the directory. So I'll type cd source, 
and then press enter to run it. And now you can see the terminal is in the source folder. Next, I will type CD repos, press enter to run it. And now we're in the repos folder. So these correspond to actual folders on your computer. So I'd suggest making a folder where you want to keep all of your react code and then run this CD command to make your terminal look at that folder. If you need help using the CD function to get into the folder that you want, do a quick search online. You should find plenty of answers. Once you're in the folder that you want within this terminal, now we can actually create our React app. So in this terminal, go ahead and just type npm create, and then type vt at latest like this. So this just uses the npm package we installed with Node and calls its create function to create a vt program. If you type at latest after vt, it'll just install the latest version of vt within your program. Once you have this type, go ahead and press enter. And then it's going to ask if you want to install this create v package. So type y to confirm this and then press enter again. And then after this, it'll just ask for a name, which we will just call it react app like this for now. So we'll go ahead and press enter there after we made our name react app. And then it's going to ask what framework we want to use. Of course, this is a react course. So use your arrow keys here to navigate down to react here. This should be highlighted in blue and then just click enter. And then next, it'll ask what language variant we want. For this course, we're just going to be using plain JavaScript. So just go down to JavaScript here and then go ahead and press enter. So after this, your project is now created and it gives us a few instructions to just finish the process. Because it just made a new folder with whatever name you entered in, we want to change our terminal to look at that folder. So we need a CD into that folder. So in my case, I'll just type CD React App because we named it React App and then I'll press enter. And now we're in our React App folder and can interact with it how we please. And next, all we need to do is run npm install as per our instructions, which will look at our program and install any dependencies or packages that need to be installed. So I'll go ahead and press enter there. And then once that is all done running, all we need to do to actually launch our app is just type npm run dev again as per the instructions, and then just press enter. And what this does is generates a local host link that we can use to actually see our local website that we are building. So if you hold down control and click it, it should open up a site and it should look something like this. And this is our actual app that we have just created. From now on, we're going to have our code editor on one side of the screen and our app on the other side of the screen. That way we can always see how our code is affecting our site. The great thing about using V with React is that the site will always update in real time without having to actually restart it. Now our project is fully set up and ready to go. This is the base site that appears when creating a React app with V. Now that we have our site actually set up and ready to go, let's look at our coding environment a bit and see what our React project has set up for us. In VS Code, go to the File Explorer tab, which should be these two pages in the top left here. Go ahead and click them, and then it'll say you have not opened a folder yet. So click this Open Folder link here, and then navigate to whichever folder you made. Once you have it selected, it'll fill the folder contents with your Explorer here if you just click Select Folder like this. So it'll reload, it'll probably ask you if you trust the authors here, what to say yes to trust the authors and then your uh, directory should look something like this. Let me quickly go through each of these folders so I can explain what each one of them means. So if you look at this top folder here called node modules and open it, you'll see we get a huge folder filled with a bunch of other folders. So whenever we run npm install, it installs all the libraries and packages we need into this node modules folder. So it's going to have a lot of content in it. We don't need to worry too much about this folder for now though. Next, we've got this public folder, which typically just holds SVG icons and other small items. Then we've got our SRC or source folder, which is where all of our web page code is actually stored. I'll open it up in just a second so we can see what's in there. These ESLint and git ignore files, we don't need to worry about too much as of right now. Package.json and package.lock.json both hold information for your installed dependencies using npm, which are both important files we'll need to be using in the future. And then we have this vconfig file here, and it just has some setup data for our v environment. So next, let's look at our SRC or our source folder and see how it interacts with this index.html file that we have here. This assets folder that we have within source just has another SVG icon for our React logo, which we don't care about. App.css and index.css are going to be our CSS files, which describe how we're formatting our content. We don't need to worry about too much CSS right now because it's not important to our React code just the site formatting. We'll talk about CSS stuff a little bit later. The main files we're concerned about are app.jsx and main.jsx. So normally .js is the file extension for JavaScript, but .jsx is the typical file extension for React files. .js files will still run React just fine, but I get used to using the .jsx extension. If we go into main.jsx, here's what it looks like. 
The goal of this main.jsx file is to be the entry point of all of our React code. Within this folder, we're accessing the React DOM and then using it to call render, which will actually generate our React site. So if you look up top here at the imports, you can see that we're importing our app.jsx file. And then within our render function down here, we're accessing this app using this notation, which basically sets up app.jsx as our main React file. So the purpose of this main.jsx is to actually render our React code and give it a main page to render, which in our case is app.jsx as specified by this app here. So now if we go to our index.html file and we look at the bottom of this HTML content and see where it says body here and look at this, and then we see where it says script here. Notice how we have this argument right here, SRC, and it's passing in our main.jsx file. So what exactly is this doing? Well, this is basically injecting the main.jsx file directly into our HTML. Then as we just saw, once this main.jsx is injected, it will call React's render function to render our actual app content, which is in here, which just renders our actual app like this, which is represented by our app.jsx file. So now let's actually go to app.jsx and see what's going on here. So here's what app.jsx looks like. Many React files will look just like this one, but I'll get more into that in the next episode in terms of the file format for React. What we need to know for right now is that if we go to our web page here, every single thing on this page comes from our app.jsx file that we have here open on the right, since our web app is only a one page application right now. So for example, if we scroll down, we can see what we have looks like HTML in this file by these tags here. Let's just go ahead and change this line here. So instead of saying v plus React, we're just gonna instead say something like, welcome to my React project. And then now if we save this file, which I just use control S for, and now look at our page, you can see that it now shows, welcome to my React project. So as long as you save your files in Visual Studio Code, your React site will automatically update for you. So that's gonna wrap it up for this first episode. In this episode, you learned what React is, how to create and set up a React environment, and you learned a little bit about what the React environment looks like. In the very next episode, we'll actually explore React files and their format so you can begin to understand what all this code here means. I'll see you in the next video.